Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name of course is Resonant and welcome to a format that I've wanted to do for a while but never really got around to spending the time on it. I play Mountain Blade for around 4 years now and I've had so many hours on it. I'm embarrassed to say how many but not only have I spent my days fighting battles on the fields of France in Napoleonic Wars or have I sieged castles in March of Rome or Fall of Mordor. I've also spent a long time sinking my teeth into the amazing sandbox single player of Mountain Blade Warband. I have done campaigns of every faction, and so I have put together a list of my top 10 units in Mountain Blade Warband single player. I will just add these are only troops you can get from the factions. I may leave companions and hireable troops to another video if you guys want it. Before I get into this video, let me just state these are my opinions. Yes, opinions that are made by me. These things coming out of my mouth right now. Yeah, these things. These are my own opinions. It's my opinions that I'm going to be telling you. So uh, tell me your list down below. But for now, listen to my opinions. And make sure you remember that these are nothing but my opinions. And opinions, these are nothing but... <sighs> it's sad. I feel the need to actually tell you guys that because there's going to be a lot of people like why did you choose that unit i don't agree with you by the way um did i mention this is just my opinions anyway let's get into it number 10 we start off with the kurgit tribesmen wait what out of all the heavy infantry marksmen archers and bulldozing cavalry you could have chosen why would i choose a stupid starting unit right okay hear me out the Kurgits are a very formidable faction of warband, known for their horse archers, going around their villages will grant you the ability to hire the Kurgit tribesmen. They are pretty inferior to many other faction recruits regarding to armour and hit points, yet I still chose them for their ability to spawn with a bow, an arrow, and sometimes even a basic horse, but that is a very low chance. But why, you may scream at me, frightening my neighbour's dead child, why does that make them good? While starting off in Karvaja, it is important to get a good footing among the bandits and looters. Having troops that can easily and quickly dispatch your enemies is very important to your success. Being able to chase down troops on horseback to quickly move on to the next section of troops is very crucial to quick troop upgrades. So you might imagine bows and arrows and horses are very good for a starting out army. This is why the Kurgit tribesman is kicking it off at number 10. Number 9. Saranid Master Archer. I'm not gonna lie, out of all the factions, the Saranids are probably my least favourite to play as, and they're my most favourable to slaughter, yet that does not discount them from my countdown, as they are very respectable troops in some places. Here we have the Saranid Master Archer. Known for their javelins, the Saranids are very formidable skirmishes, and it is nothing less in the Master Archer class. Equipped with swords, quick firing bow and heavy armour, and even sometimes maces. The Saranid Master Archer is not only a nuisance as a ranged unit, but can put up a good fight when the fighting gets personal. The main reason I'm putting the Master Archer on my list is for its quick draw, fast fire bow and heavier armour, giving it the melee edge over some other skirmisher classes. Number 8 Dropping it up at number 8 is the Nord Veg- Wait, that was, that was a bit cheesy. Coming in at number 8 is the Nord Vetchen. You may be thinking, Resonant, why is the Nord Veteran there, not the Nord Haskal? Well, my reasoning behind this is to do with positioning with the single player game. The Nord Veteran takes nowhere near as long to upgrade to than the Haskal. There's a massive jump between the Veteran and Haskal in upgrading time, and in my opinion, that is crucial for success. The Nord Veteran can mop up any troop you throw at it in its game state. With its heavy chainmail, a massive heavy shield, an introduction to heavier throwing axes and javelins, the Nord Veteran will deal deadly blows to your enemy before even getting close to them. A whole line of veterans can wipe out tens of troops at a time with their throwing axes and make for a formidable fighting force. Number 7 The Swadian Sergeant The Swadian Sergeant is one of the best melee troops in the game, armed with heavy armour, a large shield and a variety of one-handed and two-handed weapons. The sergeant can cut through not only infantry, but cavalry as well. A big reason for my decision of these troops is its ability to siege castles. As they are very heavy infantry, pushing back defending foes is no issue for these men. Cutting their way to a flag point is easier than ever, as little damage is taken from these tanks. Personally, in my opinion, 
a mix of Swadian sergeants and Rodok sharpshooters are the best way of taking a castle with minimum casualties. And that brings me on to my next number. Number 6. Yes, of course, it is the Rodok sharpshooter. These medieval snipers are the special unit for the Rodok faction and can pick off enemies from massive ranges. The heavy crossbows and bolts make short work of the enemy, and a single hit to the head is instant death. Like I said, in sieges they have no problem aiming past defences, shooting from siege towers and even holding off cavalry charges, with the heavy armour and ability to take down horses with a few shots of their bolts. The Rodok Sharpshooter is a must have for any ranged army. If you want to see hundreds of these in action, go check out my 200 Sharpshooter video for my What If series. There will be a link on the screen now. Number 5 Coming in halfway through my list, we have the Saranid Mamluk. These sandy men make a return- wait, is that racist? Oh well. These sandy men make a return as the heavy cavalry of Karadia. An absolute mindless tank that clears anything in its way. May it be heavy infantry or skirmishes, the Saranid Mamluk stops for no man. They can also clear out heavy hordes of cavalry with their lances and couch lance any infantry that has its back to them. Why do these stand out from other heavy cavalry, you may ask? Well, my curious viewers, the Saranid Mamluk has a special weapon. Paired with high prisoner management skills, the Mamluk uses its mace not to kill, but to knock enemies unconscious, making them open for capture. Selling high ranking troops can turn a hefty profit, with the number of Mamluks doing the dirty work for you. Number 4 At number 4, we have the Rodok Veteran Spearman. The Veteran Spearman is an extremely decent mid-game troop for the Rodok faction who specialise in anti-cavalry. These men carry around massive spears and pikes to complement their heavy armour and high skill. A cavalry charge will be stopped in its tracks, making them the perfect counter for the Swadians and the Kirgit Khanate. Number 3 Breaking into the top 3, we have the Vagir Marksman. Possibly the best archer in the game, the Vagir Marksman may be a lighter troop in terms of melee weapons and armour, but they shine when it comes to ranged combat. With a faster rate of fire than the Rodok Sharpshooter, their marksman skills can pick out targets from afar whilst taking little missile damage themselves. Like I said though, something to watch out with this troop is their weaker armour and melee weapons, so keeping them behind a wall of pikes or infantry is crucial for their success as a cavalry charge or infantry barrage can render them useless. Number 2 I know for many of you this one should be at the number 1 spot, but like I said, this is my opinions. But for me, they just get tipped at the last hurdle. So here we have, at the number 2 spot, sitting pretty, is the Nord Huskarl. With heavy banded armour, a massive shield that is almost impenetrable, heavy helmet, and a spiked one handed axe and a massive two handed axe, the Nord Huskarl is a true killing machine. There is no counter from a huge wave of these troops charging towards your line. They will mow you down, and the chances of survivors are minimal. The Nord Huskarl can counter archers with their massive Huskarl shields, blocking any arrows hurling towards them. And of course, they are an excellent counter for other infantry, with their crushing blows making weak shields known, and even heavy shields stand no longer than a few minutes. Number 1 Here we have it. What is going to be at the number 1 spot? Many of you will probably have guessed it, but here we have the Swadian Knight. Yes, of course, it is known that I love the Swadian Knights. In my Let's Plays in Mountain Blade, I always love to get a good army of them. And uh, it just has to be the Swadian Knight at this one spot for me. Like I said, many of you guys do know I love playing as the Swadians, and especially getting my army solely at the Swadian Knights. There is literally no counter to 80 Swadian Knights charging across an open plain, their lances lowered and their shields glinting in the morning sun. Not even the Rodok Spearmen can take out a large group of these monsters, and having them on the battlefield is really a sight to see. With insane stats and armour, the Swadian Knight is not only good at fighting on horseback, but can deal very well in sieges on foot. Scaling walls to smash enemy with their morning stars, it is really a sight to see. So that, my friends, is why I chose the Swadian Knight as my number one spot. So what are your thoughts? Make yourself a list below. 
your top 10 favourite troops. If you want to see more videos such as my favourite hireable arms, things such as the hired blades and the mercenary cavalry, remember to leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like it, but dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe for more content on Mountain Blade, but until then, I will see you in the next one.